everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our channel, Pause Animation. And today we're covering the totally fun musical anime, Ya Boy <laughs> Kong Ming! Yes! Thank you, Rascal, for finding this. <laughs> so this anime shows the Chinese tactician Kong Ming as he reincarnated from feudal China to modern day Japan. He's captivated so much by a young woman's singing performance that he vows to help her to become a star. His methods, using his war tactics from China, as well as from the art of war to gain followers. Yes, and before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification on future podcasts and World of Pause videos. Absolutely. So today we're talking about the anime, but we are definitely going to be covering the manga as soon as we read it. Right. So I'm going to say this quickly. I am so happy you found this because Yay. it's like, why do we take so long to watch this? Well, we know why you'll tell them. Right. I absolutely love this. Kong Ming is a sexy beast. I love this anime. Yes. <laughs> this is an anime I've been wanting to see since last year. It actually came out last year and we wanted to cover it in 2022. But unfortunately, they only made the anime available to watch on High Dive, which if you have a High Dive account for the site or if you get a trial to do it on Amazon Prime. Those are the only two ways to watch it. It was not available on Crunchyroll. Or Netflix or anywhere else that would be a major streaming platform for anime. Until we found it on Anime Network. Right. Now there is a dubbed version, English dubbed version, however the Anime Network only provided a subtitle version. So we are going to rewatch the show at some point in the English dub to see it's just as fun as it was in subtitles. Good excuse to watch it again. <laughs> right. And I wanted to see it for so long. It looked great. I love the intro that they had shown for and they actually had trended for a while and i really want to see this anime it looks a lot of fun it looks colorful it looks fun and i just couldn't find it so i just okay at some point i'll see it and you'll be seeing clips of it throughout this podcast right because we love it right and then he said mom found it on anime network and we have to see this anime i've been waiting so long and that's the only reason we paid for it look through it to see what they had just 12 episodes of one season um the manga actually is still going we thought it only had so many volumes and it was over the manga is currently going with 15 i mean sorry 14 volumes probably 15 coming next year and the anime seems to leave it on a uh open end type conclusion where they stopped here but you know there's more and i guess depending on the reception it could have a season two or just stop all together as a short series and i would love for it to have a season two because after just a few episodes you're immediately loving the show and it's just so much fun to watch as much fun as i thought it would be especially the very first episode of kong ming is in japan and first he thinks he's in hell because of all how all the stuff is crazy and then when he's asking about how all these technologies and conveniences are he's bugged the woman for four hours about the internet and she finally just gave up <laughs> like, why'd you stick for four hours trying to teach him this <laughs> now, believe it or not the demographic is saying it but i'm sure there's a lot of women and other people right like us that love it too it's a comedy musical written by yuto yosuba the manga it's based on the manga i should say mm -hmm. by yosuba and illustrated by Rio Ogawa. And the anime itself was directed by Shu Honima, written by Yoko Yonamayama, mm -hmm. and the studio PA Works. So it's licensed by Sentai Filmworks, and they've done a great job, we can see, translating from the manga to the anime. Right. You've read the manga, let us know 
something up to her. Right. And one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest reels in here, as he said in the, for the description of the anime, is that Kong Ming reuses his war tactics to gain followers for Ego because he vowed that he would make her big star and pretty much rule the musical world at this point. And you're wondering, well, how are you going to do that? Because he's out of time, clearly. And you're kind of wondering, well, is he going to be slow to learn all these things? Like, no, he's only slow for me the first two episodes. After that, suddenly he's on the technology, on the music, on the air, and it's suddenly it's like he was always born in this time period. It's absolutely hilarious. Yes. And how he does it is that the beginning opens up with something that's actually happened if you've read or watched Three Kingdoms or if you've read The Art of yeah, War. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or you've read The Art of War and applies these tactics to how to have the upper hand on the enemy, how to gain followers, how to gain more troops, elements of surprise. And it's like way of the house has been where everything that happens in modern day like for that show applied to being a Yakuza. Somehow he had it line up. And in here, everything they did in the tactics to gain more people and traction applied to a war tactic he used to do. And the funniest part that all of the tactics worked. Yes. Perfectly. <laughs> so I'll read the premise quickly. The famous military strategist Shuzei Kongbi menaced his might in the Battle of Wusan Plain in 234. And in the beginning you'll see this on his deathbed. Right. And then he's been born in his youth, of course. Right. And modern Japan, the period of the costume party for Halloween in the club in Tokyo, and his mask was saying he didn't even know. <laughs> the party goes in Japanese poverty, attraction of the English party people, Shibuya, lure him to a nightclub where he meets Aiko Sukuni, an inspiring singer, and his second life begins. Yeah. So that's pretty, a very accurate description of what goes on here. But yes, it's so funny. It's like, he wakes up, he's like, oh, it's me in my younger days. But like, of course, they were going to put right. you in older days on your deathbed. Right. No <laughs> anime would do that. Right. And like, was pleased. Right. Like, we're pleased. <laughs> <laughs> and the way he adapts to modern day is absolutely hilarious. Like I said, after the first two episodes, he's just adjusted already. He's got his favorite types of music. He knows to work the equipment. He knows how to use the internet. He's adapted so quickly to everything. It's absolutely hilarious. And he always tells that he's the greatest singer he's ever seen. And he means it because he's doing all this so everyone can hear her music. And... It ends up, I know for probably some people, it raises a question like, is there a ship going on here because they got to put it in? Well, we don't know for the manga. We know what they've adapted from the real Kong Ming and what they've adapted a little bit from the manga. The only thing we know in here right now is that, I think the girl's Aiko, right? Aiko? Aiko. Aiko. Aiko may like Kong Ming, and that's probably it. I think they kind of kept it as platonic for the rest of the show because you only distract the beginning she did but it looks like she got over that and she got interested in the lead singer of azalea right and we don't know if this is accurate to the manga or is this something that the writer decided to put in for the anime only mm -hmm. but regardless we're still having fun with it because it actually it'd be funny either way if she actually didn't I'm liking him <laughs> and you love his outfit and one of yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. most favorite scenes Rascal will tell you about this but you love his outfit and two things we love about those outfits we're hoping that there's a season two in the intro as you've seen on here there's a bunch of changes outfit changes where he's got his star glasses that he loves and all these other super cool outfits <laughs> that he wears but you only see him in the tracksuit right in here and we're hoping in season two we get to see him in Right. And so that became one of your favorite scenes. Yes, because uh, usually when they have the people that's from another time adapt to the modern day, they got changed their clothes, changed their hair and stuff, so they blend in. Kong Ming doesn't do that. He stays in the same robes <laughs> as he did when he was in his youth from the other time period, and he wears that everywhere. 
And to me, it was like, that's perfect. They didn't change his clothes, try to make him look modern, try to make him blend in. He stood out so much, and he was just so comfortable in his robe. And it, when people were like, who is this guy? Is he a uh, Three Kingdoms cosplayer? They keep saying he's a cosplayer. And he keeps telling them, no, I'm the real Kong Ming. They're like, okay, if you really are, then so-and-so asks a question. He answers, you are a Kong Ming. And the owners, he keeps calling right. him. He absolutely loves it. Yeah, that he was constantly right. So, and that one episode as you mentioned was the only time he had changed because realistically he had to wash his room. Right, he had to get clean. He had to dry cleaners. And he changed to a tracksuit, and you saw just how skinny he was. It was hilarious. I'm like, oh, he changed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm love that they kept him in the regular the robes because that fit really well. Yes. Not putting him in the modern day clothing and all that. It he just work. yeah, he just liked the. Star glass sunglasses, the electric sunglasses. He really liked those for some reason. So I want to give a shout out to the singers in here, mm-hmm. 96 Neko, and I'm hoping that's how that is supposed to be read. That's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. The singing voice of Aiko, and then you have Kabutajin, who's the rapper, and he is portrayed by Antonio Los Santos mm-hmm. in English. And I'm not sure who does the rapping. But if you just in case, and then for Azalea, you have Nanami, who's the lead singer, and she is voiced by uh, Hizuku Yamamura, but her singing voice is by Lezel, who I'm guessing is also a singer in Japan. Right. But the music in here is outstanding. Right. It's fun. That's the yes. underlying uh, vibe you get. It's so much fun. Even when you have the slower song, there's still some joy in them. Even when you're having the more serious scenes and you're having that type of music, there's still joy. And I think that's what also helps to keep you in that joyful mood when you're watching it. There's joy throughout this anime. No matter the backstory, no matter what's happening, there's an underlying, underlining, forgive me, uh, vibe of joy that permeates everything that happens in here the music, the singers, the voice actors, everything. And this is what makes this such a standout uh, watch. Right. Absolutely. Right. And you can see why it trended for so long last year, even with the intro song, which you can't help but dance to, is like one of the best anime intros out there that they need to put on a list. Song's catchy, the visuals are fun, we love, you want to dance to it, we've yes, been trending for a while, one time and, and, the whole intro and, with Kong, them. and showing <laughs> Kong Mean driving Cadillacs and glasses, and he's swagging, he's driving a Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, right. thank, <laughs> thank you, okay, he's driving a Rolls Royce, they keep showing how Kong Mean has swag, and I think it's absolutely hilarious, and I love, um, all throughout this show, you keep seeing, like, he's effortlessly cool, even outside of his time period, and outside of his country he's ever leastly cool he can gain the upper hand anytime he's a hit with women i think it's absolutely hilarious that he's the ultimate guy in this show yes, Renaissance man. <laughs> <laughs> so we just want to mention that there's a live action tv drama that's set to premiere unfortunately in september <laughs> uh actually a week from when you're hearing this we wanted to do this podcast in honor of that yeah we're gonna wait until next year but when we find out about that we like we gotta get this up now and get more people watching this anime before it comes out. It's actually being done in China. Yeah. So there's going to be a uh, lot changes. Right. Yeah. Some changes in not Kong Ming's name, of course, but probably any other character. Right. And we saw from a trailer that they totally changed his role. We're like, why didn't you just copy the roles that were in the anime? We understand it's China. The language is going to be different. Some things are going to be different as far as probably the culture and so forth. Why? Right. But we hope that they stick again to the underlying joy that permeates this anime. Right. I really hope so. We don't know if we have an opportunity to watch the live action uh, series. We will watch it and then review it for you and let you know what we think. Right. But if you are in China or you are in Asia where you can watch this, let us know in the comments below and let us know when you watch it and let us know should we be checking this out and right. should we check it out because we love your boy Kong. Yes, still one of the best enemies ever seen and I really hope it gets another season soon. So this is one of those treasures that 
hasn't gotten enough attention like White Cat Legend right. and some others we could go on with but these are two we've covered recently that just deserve so much more love and so much more attention and somehow they've just gone under the radar except for the music in here right. and the intro you gotta watch the anime and again you uh, intend totally to read the manga yes. because if the anime is this good the manga's gotta be exceptional so we can't wait to read it and share that with you as well Right. So if you watched your boy Kong Lee, let us know what you think in the comments below. Do you love it like we do? Yes. Was it okay for you? Let us know what you think. And if you haven't seen it, it is, as we mentioned, available on High Dive Dubbed and on Anime Network Subbed. Either one, I think it's going to be a fantastic experience. I would like to mention that David Matranga voices owner Kobayashi. Mm -hmm. So watch it, come back, and let us know what you think. And if you haven't already, subscribe for updates and visit your favorite anime series, anime shows, and all things animation. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. And the water sitting, flashing lights.